and we are live. Brianna from Tiger's Jaw, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. We got the internet all situated. We're all set. Yeah, hopefully no uh, <laughs> buffering. <laughs> during well, I mean, I keep doing these via Zoom. Obviously, um, you know, you're a person in the world. So obviously you've been affected by everything going on. And this is kind of like the new normal. Um, so, you know, these are the things we deal with. Yeah, I've been teaching art lessons over Zoom for like, or well, Zoom or FaceTime for the last year. And it's just been like, I feel like the kids have adapted so much faster than I have to like, just yeah. being able to. How has that been? Obviously, outside of Tiger's Jaw, you are an art teacher, correct? I am. I, I do private art lessons right now, just because with the band, I, you know, I can't really work in a school. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been challenging. I think specifically because like, for me, art is such a visual thing, even with teaching it that sure. to do it over zoom. It's like when you're, you know, trying to tell a seven-year-old where on the, his painting, you want him to maybe look at it or like ask him a question. It's like, where <laughs> and then trying to, you know, pointing to every single corner and you're like, no cold warmer. <laughs> like, yeah. Stop, but, you know you know i give teachers a lot of credit it's got to be a, a super uh big challenge and i think it's a challenge for teachers in a classroom setting and then you put them you know across a computer screen over the internet and i can't even imagine how that must uh you know complicate I can't things I, I only have one at a time i don't know okay. if so that's good. yeah yeah i have a, a pretty easy go of it but in comparison i would say yeah for sure well, thank you so much for doing this. I, you have no idea how much I appreciate this. Uh, I know I had Kate, uh, Kate Kishbaugh. Shout out, Kate. <laughs> Shout out, I, Kate. I work with Kate at Axelrad Screen Printing, and um, I know it's it's hard to you know keep track of emails, and you know you're you're busy, so it's like it's cool. And, and the fact that you acknowledged me initially was uh, incredible. So thank you again. I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I know we spoke. It's probably what three years ago, I think, uh, with Rich Howells. Mm -hmm. NEPA scene. And uh, a lot has happened <laughs> in three years. Yeah, a lot. And then also not a lot. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we put a new record out since then. That is a lot. I know. Congratulations. Was that done before the pandemic? Or did you guys kind of finish that up during it? It was done. I mean, it just was bad timing where we finished recording it in August 2019. And I had photographed the album artwork on March 5th. And like the hope was like a midsummer, late summer 2020 release. Right. And then um, when our tour got canceled and it was clear that like we, you know, when you put out a record, it's just like, you want to be able to tour. Right. And at the time, you know, we're trying to make these big decisions and we didn't know like how it would all pan out. And so we did decide to push it just to give ourselves time to like, maybe be able to tour and also still have like I don't know enough like time to do the rollout that we wanted rather than rush it or something but yeah so you released it in March uh of this year 2021 mm -hmm. I think it was March 5th um now we were still kind of in weird times and th I think things were kind of getting a little better um were you guys just tired of sitting on it or did you kind of say all right you know I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel we can probably tour this summer. Let's just put it out there. Well, we we actually decided like in, I think March, maybe spring last year that it was going to get pushed to then because originally it was supposed to come out in like the summertime. But then after that comes the holidays, which is kind of a weird time to put music out and like, you know, not being able to tour maybe. And so we had decided pretty much almost a year, I think, where we knew like it would come out in another year ish. Um, and that's why we did all those music videos and really tried to just do a, a, the album playthrough like as much as we could without being able to tour to like fill that time and like still like roll the record out where it didn't feel like an eternity, even though, you know, it, it, it flew by, but it also felt so long because like the record when it came out had been finished for a year and a half. Right. Is just like so long. Yeah, it is a long time. I don't. I can't imagine what it would be like to be an artist. 
uh, and have like something done and not being able to release it, I feel like I'd probably continuously go back to a song or whatever it might be and, and kind of want to change it or, or do something to it. So that's, that's gotta be difficult. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely those moments, but I think I have those, like, I mean, you have them with every record just because like the more you play the songs too, the more you listen to them, it's like, you think you've given yourself enough time to work on it, but that's why you need just like, it needs to be done when it's done. Cause like you could think of things forever to change or look back on but it yeah it definitely was crazy to just like have it and want to share it but also wanting to like not just not just like release it before we could do a bunch of the other stuff that we wanted to do with it like having like a, a rollout and all that stuff like the timing was just awkward and right everything going on it I mean I think it I'm happy with how it all ended up in the sense that we got to do all those music videos and things that we wouldn't have gotten to do if we um, had been busier with touring. So I don't know. <laughs> right. And well, you had a, a, a great record release uh, show. Uh, you guys did it at Carl Hall. Uh, yeah. Obviously also weird. Typically when you'd have a, an album release show, it's in front of people. Um, in this case, it was just you guys at Carl Hall in, in downtown Wilkes-Barre. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, how important was it to you guys to, you know, kind of still do something for your fans? Um, and, I, and I love the, uh, the, the show uh, fee, so to speak. It was uh, free 99. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. That's always a good uh, catchphrase. Um, you know, how, how important was it to have it in, you know, your kind of hometown where you live and, and, and where you're from um, and why Carl Hall? Um. It was really important for us just to even like play the record through and have have it out there and we knew we wanted it to be free because we were like if we're going to put all this time and ener energy into this like we want it to be accessible to everybody that wants to see it like you could go on youtube and just watch us play through every song and it was like a challenge and also something for us to like focus on where like to be able to play through every song on the record like you'd never get to do that on a tour right um but it also was another excuse for us to get to work with all of our friends that we like love so much and are so talented that we live so close to. We're so lucky to have such a, a creative and like, you know, hardworking group of friends that are always down to help us. And um, Carl Hall was a really cool, like the way it worked out was really cool because we weren't sure we were like looking into the classic like VFW or, you know, just oh, something wow. like it's not that Carl Hall wasn't our first inclination, but I think I didn't necessarily want it to look like it was at a venue. So a venue wasn't my first like idea of where to have it, but it with COVID, it was just really hard to even get in touch with people. And someone was like, what about Carl Hall? And I was like, oh yeah, like Carl Hall, like I wasn't thinking of venues, but duh, like we, and we can transform a space. Like, what are we thinking? Like, it was like, of course we should have asked AJ from the, from the get, but like he was so gracious with like letting us use the space and like just, you know, really like believing in the vision and trusting us to like, you know, be respectful of it. And it was just really cool. And um, any way that we can like connect and work with or and hang out with people in our community, like that's the best part. It's like feeling like the scene is like real and like, you know, being able to, even though you can't go to shows or play shows, like still like utilizing this sick venue in our hometown, like, I don't know, all around, it was great. Yeah. I mean, the set looked fantastic. I mean, you couldn't even tell you were at Carl Hall. You guys did a great job. Cool. It, that. Not that, like, I love the vibe at Carl Hall. Sure, of course. Like, the vibe. <laughs> like, the, like your dad's basement, you know, <laughs> but I really wanted it to just feel like you didn't know where it was like, yeah. and I can't believe it. It just like all came together. Like everything was like, we did everything ourselves, like steaming the fabric, going to Joanne's like to get more <laughs> because we were like, shit, we're like six feet <laughs> short. Um, like deciding what knickknacks and like how we could tie the videos in. And it was actually my fiance Shane's idea to do those like clouds hanging down so that like, it just filled the whole space. It it was like everybody's ideas coming together to make it like perfectly us. And like, I feel like everybody that was involved was so actively involved where it was like, I don't know, it really did transform it into this like 
cool little u-shaped performance space. yeah and that still i guess lives online on youtube correct yeah and it will forever i think yeah I think. unless you take it down right yeah i did um i edited the the whole thing and it almost broke me as a person because <laughs> i i've never like i just got into editing videos really like I think the eyes shut weird video was the first thing, first video I ever like, you know, stitched together using like something from the Adobe Creative Suite or whatever. But this is like 45 minutes. And then I specifically wanted each song to like flow into the next with visuals, but like not us like drinking water. Like I wanted it to feel cinematic. I just set myself up for this like huge thing where I was like, I'm editing it myself and I'm coloring it myself. And literally it was like, the the minute it like the last minute possible it could be uploaded like I had it uploaded <laughs> the label so much trust in us I am very very uh, grateful but yeah it better live forever because like we put so much I mean part of the reason why we put so much work into it is because so much of the stuff we make will you know be around for years and years hopefully so yeah I mean I think that's why you know a lot of things or a lot of musicians do that what they do is because it's um you know you're kind of leaving uh something behind when you know we're all gone you know people will continue to, to appreciate it and enjoy it you know for years and years and years which is really cool yeah and I'm lucky that like it's crazy my, that this is my life and I like get to do all of this and I mean especially this year with not being able to tour I mean it's always like grass is always greener, you know, like you could get jaded with touring or whatever, but now I'm like, I felt like not myself because I didn't get to like play music. And I was like, it's so part of me to like do this band. So. Yeah. One thing, I mean, obviously, I don't know if you're familiar with this podcast, but it's, it's really music intensive, um, particularly, you know, artists that are in and around Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and I, I always, I talk to a lot of musicians and, and one question I ask them a lot is like, you know, being creative and performing and, and things like that, I think is such a, a big part of being a musician. Like how, how has the last year really um, affected you like mentally? Cause obviously, you know, mental health has always been an issue for, you know, in the world. And I think, you know, going through this past year, um, we've kind of been able to address it more just because it's been so, uh, I don't want to say common, but I mean, it's, it's people are really suffering and you know, as a musician and someone, I mean, granted you can be creative, you know, with your art and things like that. And, but as far as being a musician and playing out and then performing for people, how is, how was that for you? Like I said earlier, just, I don't think I like had even realized how important and like ingrained in my life, like, that part of me was like being a musician and like playing live um like not having the touring schedule where you're you're home for a little bit and then you're away and then you're home for a little bit like sometimes it means like when you're home like you're not necessarily having to deal with a lot of stuff that like if you were home consistently like you'd eventually get around to like I don't know, like even with my own mental health, like I feel like the, how busy I am and the structure I get from touring, like is so crucial to me, like feeling good and functioning at like my, you know, whatever, like where I feel like myself, because like I've had more time than I've had in the, like to do things and be my own boss and like create my schedule for the day than I have in the last like ever in my life because I've always been doing a million things like in a million different sports and extracurriculars and then college and work and Tiger's Jaw like I'm known with my friends for just like being someone to do so many things at one time but I think it's the reason that works for me is because like I have ADHD and like when I'm like I have a particular amount of time to get something done like the accountability of that like I have that amount of time like I'll get it done but when I have all day or weeks to do it, it's just like, it's, I, I try, or I feel like I try. And then I feel bad because I didn't get things done. And it's like this cycle of anxiety and depression from like not performing how I like think I should, but it's like, I'm also trying to learn to give myself like a break because it's, this is like, not like my normal, like, and I'm, still getting a lot done and I need to like 
give myself some credit. You know what I mean? Like we're so used to also feeling like we have to work like at all times. Right. So like trying to find more balance in that, like has been a learning curve, especially like, cause usually tour is work. And then when I'm home, it's like, I like have the time to do the things that I like some passion things that I love to do. You know what I mean? Like spending time for myself, hanging out with my friends. Cause I haven't seen them in so long, but like now I'm working, like, I don't know if you've had to work from home and have experienced this, but just like there being no separation from like work and home has been like where I can't stop working, but I'm not like getting anything done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been in sales for a majority of my career. So like I'm always working, even when I'm not at work, but I can understand what you're saying for sure. I mean, like, you know, your work definitely will mix into like, you know, your, your, your downtime too especially when we're working from home. Yeah, yeah it's been, it's been a, definitely a weird year, but I think, you know, and it sounds like you can probably agree, but it's uh, people have been really able to kind of, kind of slow things down and reflect on who they are and, and just have a chance to almost breathe. Um, yeah. Kind of address things that needed to be addressed. Yeah, I think it was like really forcing people to like look, look at themselves. And it, it's kind of crazy too, to me, or not crazy, but just like coincidental in a funny way where like the the whole kind of theme of our record is um, like holding yourself accountable because you can only be responsible for how you are living your life. Like obviously you like can hold other people accountable in other ways, but it's like, I want to know that I'm like, being the best friend that I could be, like the best partner that I could be, like trying to, like being willing to hear the things that I am doing wrong or or that like are hurtful or something. Cause I feel like that's, you know, part of the reason why people are passive aggressive isn't because they're like not trying to be direct. It's because they don't want to like hurt you by being upset, like that kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It just is crazy how now it's like, the self-accountability is very like it feels like a an energy or something like where I feel like all my friends like I don't know I feel like I've like aged <laughs> it's the first time <laughs> in my life where I feel like old, like significantly different I think than when I did when I was like 18 or something too you know what I mean like just having those reflective nostalgic like yeah oh times are different now <laughs> yeah well, I mean, you know, we're also growing up too. It's, you know, things are different. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny how that, it's, it's funny how that just, you know, like I, I think about, you know, back when I was younger and the things that I did that I would never think about doing now. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's, it's cool too. Cause like, I, I kind of went back through your catalog of, of albums and, and it's, it's always, I always really find it interesting to, to kind of see where a band started. Um, and when they kind of start, it's almost like they're reckless and that I say reckless as in like, not that they don't care, but like, it's just, it's a different time, whether technology has changed between the start and where they are today or whatever it might be. But like, it's just so cool to kind of listen and hear like where they started and where they are today. And one thing I love about Tiger's Jaw is like, I've never heard, like, there's never been a song for me that's like a standout song. Like, oh my God, this is the best song because they're all so good. And I'm not saying that just because you're, you know, you're, you're in front of me here. Um, it's just, I mean, everything you guys put out, has just been really consistently solid. Um, and obviously it's, you know, it was different from when it started to where it is today. And that's kind of what I just said, but, um, you know, as you guys get older and, and kind of go through life and experience more things, I mean, I'm assuming that gets put into your, your writing processes. Yeah. I mean, the biggest difference I think is like how it, the amount of like, not responsibility, but just like kind of the heaviness of the world is different when you're younger. There, it like there's almost a freeness where like, you know, it's before the band even like you think of anything about business because like you live with your parents and are in high school. <laughs> so you're like, yeah, I work like part time as a waitress. Like I'm fine with money. <laughs> like you don't understand. Like, like it's something I wish that as like you know, an artist, a musician that like, I didn't have to worry about because I would feel more like reckless and free. And like, just like, I don't know that like, it definitely is something that is, uh, 
I don't know, we've always tried to find balance in it because we're never gonna do something just because of a business decision. Like it always has to feel like true to who we are, but it doesn't mean that like we can never think about business because it's like, it's our livelihood. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And I, I think a lot of musicians like these days treat this more like a business than, you know, people like bands did in the seventies and eighties and things like that. Um, and I don't know if it's because like we know more and I, I don't, I don't know what it is exactly. I just, I, it, it just seems like the bands these days, you know, really treat, you know, what they're doing seriously. Not, and not that like bands like Aerosmith and, and stuff like that didn't, but it's just a different time. Like you guys, I think I was talking to, was it AJ maybe I forget who it was recently but like you know with the social media and cell phones and things like that like you guys can't even like risk being wild and and reckless and even if you wanted to and I'm not saying that's what type of people you are but it's just like you're, you're constantly under a microscope and it's 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 weird it's different yeah the accountability of the public eye is different I think in a good way but I think it's also like think of the difference of the times of like arrows and whatever like there were bands that made it and they were like rock stars like they were making money like they right. were like, but now there's more accessibility not only to put your stuff out there but to like find resources of how to grow your band because like even if it's like yeah that's like a business idea it's also like as, as a musician like you want people to hear your music like you want to be successful and it mean like you're connecting with other people. Like to me, it's not like, oh, I want so many people to listen to our music. So I make a ton of money. It's just like the bigger we are as a band, it means like the more our music is reaching like other people and like just the, like how humbling and gratifying that feels as an artist to have your art connect to other people. But then also it's like, this is like what I want to, like I'm living the dream. And the way that you continue to do that is by like growing your fan base and having more people help support you so you can give back to them by giving them like the art that you make it's like right. a symbiotic relationship um but i feel like the way that the music industry is today like how much spotify pays like per stream how many bands like it, it's like th there are so many popular bands like the, the way that even singles roll out now is so different because of soundcloud and um i don't know like the ability of people for people to just like release one thing at a time and it'd be more about singles maybe than albums it's like we put out I think five singles for our new record and that is crazy like that is more than we have ever done and it was partially because of how long it was in COVID and everything but it also was like this is changing there are like the way Spotify works like you should put out more it's just like thinking about things like that is weird but like you have the ability to do that what I wish is that everybody could be like make you know able to support themselves from all of this like yeah. you know knowledge but yeah and you mentioned like reaching a large audience um and just growing your fan base through you know creating great music and things like that i have to mention i, I was um doing one of these the other day uh today's wednesday that was monday um it was with a, a guy named mitch evans he's in a band uh, a pop punk band in scranton pa and one of the questions i asked him um, cause he had a, he had, uh, I think it was Josh Bell or TJ Bell. I forget that. And I apologize if that person hears this, but, uh, on one of their songs, their new EP, which comes out May 14th. Um, mm -hmm. and I asked him a question. I said, who, who else would you want to collaborate if you had the opportunity to, and he did not know I was speaking to you, uh, today. And he said, Brianna from Tiger's Jaw. Oh, wow. And I, and I joked too. I said, I, I, when I, before I asked the question, I said, listen, Mitch, I mean, uh, I have a million listeners. There's going to be a million people listening to this. Uh, you know, take your shot. <laughs> Obviously I'm joking. Um, but I, you know, it was just funny that he, he, he said that and not knowing that I was speaking to you tonight. So you have, you have, uh, definitely reached people that, uh, really appreciate what you guys do and enjoy your music and that look up to you guys. Which I mean, is really cool. it's really cool too because they're from the area like i love that connection too so yeah yeah dm me <laughs> we'll see what Mitch, we'll see. I, I i said to him like yo dude if i if, if i could 
I hope one day I'll have a million listeners that could have that much power to make those things happen. So Mitch, you heard her messenger. Maybe you can make it happen. That'd be cool. Now that's a good band too. It's a, it's a, like I said, it's anytime. No. Yeah. Anytime soon. Jesus. There's another oh. band called, uh, oh, Kyle Demko, man. I can't, I can't remember. There's, it's, it's very similar. And I, I mix them up sometimes by accident. I feel like I have just permanent brain fog, so I can't remember any names. Like if you were to ask me like a fact, I probably couldn't like tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing is, was cool too. Uh, I was talking to Kate today and she said that you also do a lot of, of, if not all, since you've been in the band, uh, the cover art, yes. whether it's photography or I think the one was like, I think you embroidered. I did. Yeah. Which is um, wild. I mean, you guys, you are like involved. Yes, I, I am. Uh, I'm also an artist that has ADHD, which is why I do so many things. It's like a new hobby, a uh, new um, thing to learn uh, for each one, but it started um, with self-titled. We needed cover art. Um, Belongs to the Dead had already been out when I joined Tiger's Jaw, so I didn't do the art for that. Right. Um, not the original art, but for the self-titled art, I had made a screen print in my soft, I believe it was like, I think sophomore or junior year art class of that of the heart on a piece of orange paper. And then I like, I was like, oh, I have this if we want to use this. Like, I'd never done anything like that before, which is also like how I joined Tigers. I was like, I play piano if you need someone to fill in. <laughs> Just offering my, my skill set, I guess. Um, but I don't know, just that feeling of like seeing it, seeing like your art, like it's real. It's like on an actual thing. Like that was so formative for me. And it's something that even like, I, I tell that story so many times, like whenever I do get the chance, like as a teacher, especially to high school kids, cause it's like, you don't have to even be in the band. You could be in your friend, like it could be your friend's band and like think of having that and then being able to do that. Like you could do that as a job and it's something you also love. Like I, that's why I loved even with Tiger's Jaw, like before I wrote songs for the band, it was like, I loved being able to play keyboard and Tiger's Jaw and like make the art for it. And that felt like so huge too, but pretty much every record cover I have done. I think that there's like a couple, maybe like a split or two and the belongs to the dead original artwork I can do, but I did do, um, when we reissued that, we put that out with fun for cover. I did like the cover art and that was really fun because we took photos and our friend Spencer's garage, which is like a place where Kate and Cannon practiced all the time. And um, that was, it felt really cool for me because like I said, I wasn't in the band when that record came out. So then to have like this thing that I could like connect to, like it was really cool. But yeah, it's, I do all, the, I do a lot of it. Yeah. But oh, that's great. I like doing it. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's, it's part of who you are. So, I mean, why not, why not kind of immerse yourself into it? Um, one thing I wanted to say, uh, I forget already. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, you know, obviously you kind of split lyrical um, duties with Ben. Um, when you guys write albums, is there, you know, do you guys go in saying, all right, I'm going to do, you know, five and you'll do five or six and four or whatever it might be is there is there a kind of goal when you guys go into that or is this kind of like it happens naturally it happens naturally and it's like hilariously unspoken like I think um I with spin it was a little different because like I Ben basically like encouraged me to do it and I didn't know if I could write one song and I ended up writing four and then three were like what I felt like good about being on the record. Um, and so it kind of was the same for this. Like Ben could write 12 songs, like he did. I think he might've written 14 songs or something for this record. Like he just like, and they're all so good. And then it, the way that it worked for me is like I had uh, four or five, I can't remember how many I ended up. Oh, 
four again <laughs> my sweet spot four four songs um and we knew that we would probably have more songs than would be on the record like because there are two of us writing knowing that like we want it to feel like not like evenly balanced or something but we want it to you know if i'm going to be a songwriter in the band like i need to be represented in in the album and not just like my songs end up on a b-side like i mean that's never the vibe anyway but do you know what i mean like, yeah um so when we were recording all of these songs there were 16 total we treated everyone as though it would be on the record and then we did the sequencing with like figuring out what songs we wanted what songs made the most or felt the best together on the record wanting it to be i mean everybody for some reason we were all stuck on like 10 songs like 10 feels great and then we ended up with 11 in a hilarious like does 10 or 11 matter a conversation but it wasn't that hard to like kind of let go of some things or you know be convinced or like see reason in having the track listing be one way for the record because we're going to put out an ep with the rest of the songs so like everything is like getting its weight you know like sure. you could have two songs that are different songs write them at different times but when you put them on the same record like they take they could be similar enough where they take away from each other in like a weird way like if they're the same tempo or key or something but if you put one of those on your record and then the other one on the ep it's like they each have their time to shine because it's like nobody writes a song and they're like this song's a filler song <laughs> like i hope not right right like i mean i don't think so at least but like you know that i think part of having it not feel that way to people when they're listening to the record is like really thinking about like as hard as it is to slim down from like a huge number because it is so hard it's like my least favorite part it makes me so emotional I never like know if I am making the right choice. I feel so torn. Um, but in the end, it's like every record that we've done, like it all feels so good. Even if like I wasn't sure in the end, like listening to it and like how other people have to listen to it and get used to it in that order. Like you do that yourself. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And I, no, no, that's great. No, that's that's why I asked the question. Uh, you know, and I think it's cool, like the time that we're living in now where you know, you can put out those 10 songs and if you have three or four more, you can, you can put them out as singles if you want to and, and continue yeah. to pump out the content. Cause that's what it's yeah. all about these days is content. Oh, God, I kind of started hating that word content. Yeah. But it makes everything feel less important or like, you know what I mean? Like content, content. It's like, no, like we worked for months so hard on this thing. And then it's like content you post one day. You could post it one more day and then that's it. It's like gone. Th that's why I miss shows so much too, because it's like, that's always going to be part of our shit. Like we were a band that started when MySpace existed. So that's not like weird, but when it's like the only thing, it's like, I don't know how people do like, just like putting out a podcast where you're like relying on like getting engagement by reaching out to people in like these different ways. It's like without being able to play the show or like, or opening up for a tour and then people see you you know what I mean like that kind of in-person like interaction like it it is so much pressure to make your social media and the all of that this like force that like yeah. functions like a system or something because the algorithm is evil yeah and it's a lot of work I mean so I, consuming. yeah I mean I like to think that I take this seriously mm -hmm. um I, ideally, I would like to have a studio so the sound quality would be better. I think, you know, living in the world we live in now, the people are forgiving as far as, you know, these kind of conversations go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's like a full-time job. And like, again, like I, I have a full-time job. This is kind of something that I do like just for fun, purely for fun. It's just something I know that, <clears throat> well, I, I think I mentioned this to you before I had a radio show and I played a few Tiger's Jaw songs on it, but it got uh, put on hiatus back in November of last year. So I started this because I wanted to continue having that connection with the artists and bands and, um, you know, the the scene here in, in EPA, because like when the show got put on hiatus, I would say like, I felt lost. And I, again, I was doing a show on a Saturday night, nine o'clock. Like I'm not setting the world on fire. 
I don't even belong on the radio. I don't have any kind of training to be on the radio, but for that hour a week, like I felt like I had a purpose. I mm-hmm. felt like I was like, you know, doing whatever I could to support, you know, these musicians and try and reach people with their music. And then when I got shut down, I was just like, you know, what am I going to do? Like, I think I need them more than they need me. So I started this and I, I hope people enjoy it. I hope people do it. And I, and thank you again for doing this. Cause it's going to, um, you know, bring a little bit of uh, legitimacy to <laughs> what I'm doing. I was more than happy to be a part of it. I think it's so cool. Even like NEPA scene, like I want to support like the local media or like whatever, like, I don't know what would you call podcast, like just like the support of the area of people that are trying to like promote the fact that this is something that is so cool in our area. Like we're so lucky to have as many artists living around here, like musicians and like, we should be supporting each other too. Like the bands can't do it without like people supporting them. So I, yeah, let's talk about that because you guys, you guys also uh, perform a lot of shows. I feel like around here, uh, you guys did the holiday show for many years with the Menzingers. Um, you did a show last year um, that helped support some uh, lo- local music. Um, I think it was local music uh, areas at the casino, not the casino, Mohegan Sun Arena. Uh, I think it was July of last year. Uh, and shout out to Matt Rabovich. Um, I ran into you and Ben there and shout out to Ben for wearing, I think the most talked about shirt at that show was he had the, uh, the shirt with the grump on it. Um, I saw social media flooded with um, just mentions of Ben's shirt. He has but, more Red, ba- Red Baron's memorabilia than anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> but so Matt, uh, I used to work with Matt. He still works at the radio stations and um, he was a huge fan of you guys. And I kind of felt cool. Cause I'm like, dude, like, let's just go say hi. Like I've, I've met them before. Like, well, really, dude? Really? You're serious? I'm like, yeah, dude. They're, they're normal people. They're really cool. And uh, he got the picture with you guys, and he felt like you know a million bucks. So thank you for doing that. And he he's over the moon about that. And he, he loves you guys. And um, yeah. you guys always do that though. You're always like just very like involved with the local community. Again, that show um, was last year. It helps again. I forget the exact uh, organizations, but. Um, Again, weird too, because we were still in the pandemic. It was July last year. Yeah, um, it was the drive-in uh, show where everybody had to like park in a space and yeah. stay like around their car. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of, uh, you know, lighters or clapping, you heard, uh, mm-hmm. you saw lights and car horns. It was cool. Yeah, it was really neat, actually. Um, but you're also, you have a show booked. I think it's August of this year. It's Outback at Carl Hall. Yes. Tickets for those shows are on sale now at eventbrite.com. And then I saw just recently you announced, well, today, actually, today's uh, May 12th. Um, so tickets will be on sale for the show by the time this uh, podcast comes out, but a show at the uh, Union Transfer in Philly. Yeah, that is like the first, I mean, it's the, other than uh, like playing out back at Carl Hall, which is outdoors and like a socially distanced event. Um, it's been really kind of, it's been a little stressful to think like, when is the right time? Because you don't want to be having an event where people are congregating if it's too early, like we want to be responsible. But um, if, when we got the offer to do the show at Union Transfer, like I felt so excited, like so much like relief that like there is like an end in sight or just like something I can look forward to that is like I'm Union Transfer is one of my favorite venues I actually used to be a spaghetti warehouse and I got a job there when I was in college and the week I was supposed to start I got bit by a brown recluse spider and I couldn't start and then it turns into Union Transfer so I would have lost the job anyway right and then now we're playing there oh wow <laughs> and October, it's just I don't know it, it's one of my favorite venues for a lot of reasons but um just the fact that it's in Philly which like we Scranton is our our hometown like um I I still live in the area but like I grew up like right outside of Scranton Ben's from Scranton proper he lives in Philly now but Philly is has always kind of felt like when you graduate in Scranton you go to Philly and go to college or you know what I'm saying like that kind of like tie and even it was one of the first places that we were able to like play that was like far away and like 
it's also like our hometown. Like we feel so like, you know, like Eastern PA, it's like the, the major city that we can play and to like be able to play our record release show. Like, oh, I just feel so happy that's happening. Yeah, I mean, it's great seeing all these shows uh, get announced. Um, and hopefully, you know, we continue moving forward. And um, yeah, I don't know what side of the fence you're on, but hopefully people continue getting vaccinated or, or whatever it might be. Like, just I hope people stay safe and we can kind of gather again and, and have shows and, and, and have fun. Yeah, because... our whole band is vaccinated. We fully support vaccines. Like, I'm the person that gets the flu shot every year because if I don't, like, I get the flu. And I think having a nurse as a mom too, it just like, I feel so much safer knowing that like, if we're a band and we're traveling from like state to state to state, like to have the vaccine, like uh, even being able to like hang out with my friends in my living room feels like <laughs> less anxiety. Like that, yeah. I think, is the reason. but, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. And I saw on, uh, you also have like a sunset sessions on YouTube. Uh, yes, I'm actually ex recording one that I'm going to post tomorrow Sweet. it'll be out by the time the podcast comes out but that was really fun um we knew like I forget exactly how we knew we were going to be doing like these zoom in stores for the record the day the record came out um gallery of sound did one it was really cool but we were trying to figure out where to do it and usually my house is home base but my house has been home base for like a year. So Colin only lives five minutes down the street, down the Ave in 44. And he has a beautiful house. And um, the, part of the name of the street is Sunset. So we call his house Sunset. Like, oh, you're going to Sunset. And so it's the Sunset Sessions. And we figured out when like getting all this uh, Zoom stuff together, like Ben was like, we should record some stuff. Like we could do all this ourselves. Like We'll just use iPhones and I have like we have cameras that we'll figure out and like I'm just editing them together and um we're releasing one a week and just putting them on YouTube to like have something to you know content content content, <laughs> content. but also because it was like something we could do like that sure. has been one of the good things about this, this band for me is like we could have just like taken a break or something, but everybody was like, no, like, what can we do? Like, if we're all together, we might as well like record stuff, I guess. Like Teddy can record us, like we'll figure out filming, you'll edit it. Like just having something for all of us to be a part of has like gotten me through so many of the weeks this year where it was like, if I didn't have anything to like sit and do, like I would have like been in a dark, darker place. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think a lot of musicians and artists have, uh, you know, they did that. They found ways to continue to be creative. And I guess that's not a surprise because you're creative. So it's like, it kind of, it's what you guys do. It's good stuff. So what else? 2021 for Tiger's Jaw. That, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, get any, you know, secret info out of you, but what can people expect out of you guys the, the rest of the year? 2021. I mean, Honestly, we're always kind of brainstorming like what we can do. Um, it the moment like it becomes okay to book shows, we're definitely gonna do that. Um, but for now, I don't know, just trying to like figure out ways that we can keep putting things out. There's a couple more, one, two, three more sunset sessions coming. So that'll be kind of the focus for a while. But I don't know, just gearing up and and planning, like we're making plans, we're trying to like look forward to all of the things we can be doing and like there's still so many fun decisions to make too like when we can tour like what's the backdrop going to be like what merch can we have like second pressing of the record already you have to talk about like that's crazy yeah. and exciting yeah yeah so just stuff like that keeping the uh i won't care how you remember me uh <laughs> energy rolling <laughs> until we Absolutely. can pour on the record um because yeah I, I that's like kind of the weirdest thing of putting the record out during this time is like usually you put the record out and then it feels different everything feels different it's like you're in that you're playing shows playing these songs live and so I'm like just 2021 is about like getting to that place finally and not letting it just be like we put out this record or, and starting something else even like we really want to like like 
we love this. We put so much of our heart into this <laughs> record and we can't wait to like finally be able to, you know, do the rest of the things you get to do when you put out a record. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope that happens, you know, sooner than later for you guys. And um, I plan on seeing you guys out back at Carl Hall. Again, like Brianna said, it's outside at Carl Hall. So it's, you know, don't worry about being in the, in the, the, the basement of Carl Hall. It's outside. It's going to be safe, socially distanced. Your lawn chairs and your own cooler, I saw. Yeah, BYOB, I guess. Yeah. So that's really cool. Let's yeah, hang get weekends in wilkes Bear. Yeah. Carl Hall. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm so proud of AJ for doing that because I, I helped him with the banner for the – I think he just put it up today on the side of the building. Um, and uh, I told him, like, the, the lineup he put together for this summer – uh awesome. the, the talent is incredible it really is like it was you guys and i'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, bob lewis but bob lewis and modern ties and rosary guild and Knoxon and the list goes on um again those tickets are available now at eventbrite.com uh but i mean what aj did and and he said it was easy it's for the most part it was like you know it was a phone call it wasn't working with a lot of you know you know management and labels it was just uh you know phone call and everyone's like yeah let's 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 do it so uh i'm excited for that well, working with like your like the people in your community too is you're just like you get the contact you call them up like I loved how you hit up Kate because like I was like thank goodness you texted me because like I am so bad with email <laughs> and it was like because we had that connection you know through the community yeah well I so I was I was at our desk today and I'm like hey would you mind because I didn't want to bother you uh, and I'm like would you mind shooting Brianna a text just to, to see if she's still good for tonight I said, I haven't heard from her since we scheduled it. I said, if it's not, if she's not cool for tonight, that's, that's, that's fine. I just want to make sure that I, you know, I, I you know, plan the night accordingly. And she's like, yeah, no problem. And you wrote right back and she's like, oh yeah, she's, she sucks at email. And it's, it's funny because like, I, I'm either the best or I'm the fucking worst. <laughs> and usually I'm the worst. So, I mean, so you're an artist, right? And I'm, this is what I'm going to say is not a knock on artists, but I've, I've worked with artists for a, a majority of my life. And they tend to stink at communication. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, but there's like, so like guys like me, um, you know, sales and, and that's, that's what we do all day. We communicate. So there's a, there's a, a place for all of us. Yes. <laughs> you guys we write, awesome, yeah, you guys write awesome music and, and create art, whether it's, you know, music and, and or paintings and which is awesome. I wish, I wish I could do that. Uh, I would sacrifice the communication stuff in a second to be able to create music like you guys do. But um, it's just funny. It, I mean, I've always just, I've, you know, designers and, and creators are just, I, I don't know. It's just, it's funny. And Matt at Axel Red, he'll be the first to say, it's like, dude, I suck at communicating. Like, like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's cause you're using your brain in a different, it, it really does come up to like the amount of energy, like, energy I have left in my brain like when it comes to like having to look at the email and think about how to respond I'm literally like I have none I have none left like I don't I didn't even open it today <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't even know you emailed so. yeah I was like I'll just check in and see if she you know she's still good because I again I know you're busy I know you got stuff going on and and again I I can't thank you enough for doing this tonight I really do appreciate it um but you guys are always so so cool about you know supporting your community who you know you've been a part of for so long. So again, thank you so much. Um, I wish you nothing but the best of luck with, um, you know, touring this year, hopefully, and, and the shows at Carl Hall and Union Transfer. And hopefully I see more uh, show dates coming out of the Tigers Jock Camp. But uh, hopefully I'll see you um, out back at Carl Hall. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. So awesome. Well, <laughs> they can't do it without you. Yeah, but I mean, the other shows too, I'm sure we'll bump, we'll bump into each other. Sounds Thank good. you so much for asking me. This was really nice. It's no, always I like appreciate fun though, especially in these days. Yeah, yeah. So again, thank you. And uh, tell everyone in the band I said hi. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Will do. All right. Thank nice you so much. You. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.